Welcome to the next module called Balancing Beyond Belief. I'm Andrew Hewitt here with Sanjeev Sidhu and we're going to walk you through a quick recap uh, from the last module and then we're going to go into five specific balancing techniques to help you balance your ripple and move to that state of empowered despite circumstance. And at the very end we're going to get into activities for this coming week to help you practice these new techniques. Sanjeev, why don't you take it from here? Great, thanks. It's great being here with you. Yeah, let's, let's do done. this. I'm excited. This is the, this is the real work. We're, we're, we've got awareness, now we get to balance those disempowering behaviors, energy, physiology, emotions, desires, beliefs. Like This is a lot of stuff. Great, so great. I'm excited. Uh, so let's dive in and uh, look forward to uh, sharing this next step with you. All of you have been working on your awareness and hopefully awareness of everyone is high. How's your awareness, Andrew, today? Uh, my awareness? I'll, I'll turn my switch on. So there we go. I'm officially aware. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I'm officially aware. And what's your awareness telling you? Oh, my awareness is telling me that this is going to be a lot of fun and a breakthrough for a lot of people. I know this was a breakthrough for me, realizing that there's some great techniques for when you're feeling disempowered and in the heat of the battle you can use them or you can go deeper into underlying beliefs and really rewire the reoccurring patterns that cause you to be disempowered so so I'm aware of my excitement to share this great how great. about yourself what's coming up for me is a desire and my desire is that I'm imagining all of you at home or wherever you're watching this from and you're distracted by Facebook, you're distracted by anything, and my desire is that you be totally focused. So uh, maybe I'm gonna make up my mind for the next hour, this is the most important thing that I'm going to be doing. How about I get the reverse commitment from you where for the next hour, this is the most important thing you're focusing on. We can all make this a meditation. We can make it an awareness exercise where we are deeply focused. Deal? Deal. Good, let's, <laughs> let's, get, <laughs> let's get going. So let's start by quickly revisiting what we've learned till now, right? So we talked about Tom and Mary, and Tom and Mary fall into the ditch. And uh, Tom has a very V1 or version 1 response. It's very typical. It's not good. It's not bad. It is what is and Tom has pre-programmed responses to it. So the moment he gets punched in the face, it's a typical response. He gets angry, he gets frustrated, he gets frantic in his behaviors. Mary, on the other hand, is a V2 ninja. She has a completely different ripple. As the big stone falls, her ripple is really small and it's intentional. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to talk about how to do that. So most of you have been experimenting with your Ripple and have been building your awareness. So let's quickly review some of your uh, assignments. One of them was to uh, review your most disempowering uh, moments or do a Ripple of that. And thanks for those of you who shared your experiences on Facebook and those who feel comfortable and haven't shared, I think it's very valuable for the community to mm -hmm. see what you went through in terms of increasing the light or shining the light on your ripple. Uh, the next assignment was to continue that practice but as a daily recap. So take the PDF, take the ripple sheet, and look back last 24 hours. Look at what your behaviors were, what your energy was like, what your emotions were like, and what your desires that were driving the ripple. And I actually talked to a few of you and I was amazed that you came to a conclusion that I was hoping some of you notice, which is that no matter what the circumstance, our response to that is pre-programmed and is quite similar. So when you start comparing your Ripple 1 to Ripple 2, Day 1 Ripple to Day 2 Ripple, or most disempowering moment 1 to another disempowering moment, you see that your response is quite similar. Again, not good, not bad. And the idea really is how to 
learn how to behave more like Mary than Tom. Mm -hmm. So, um, what's in your mind? Anything, any circumstance worrying you, Andrew? Well, I just recently moved into a new home, and so it's a mess. You know, there's so much to do. There's boxes to unpack and things to figure out, and so uh, my ripple has been pulsing with um, just this 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 feeling of overwhelm of, of stuff to do and, and and the house being out of order. Let's do a quick ripple. All so right, let's dive in. What's your desire? My desire is to have order and I like that everything has its home in its place and to be neat and tidy. How attached are you to that desire? Do you have tremendous sense of urgency? Do you feel... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm used to the house being clean and so my urgency is, you know, my default response is mm -hmm. we need to put everything in its place and so that feels urgent. Right. And how's that showing up in your emotion and your feelings? How are you feeling about it? Uh, feeling would be a, like a frustration mm. or an overwhelm. Mm. 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 I would too. Mm -hmm. And how about your energy and physiology? How's it showing up there? Yeah, I, I feel like oh, it's like this weight on the shoulders. So it's uh, my physiology and energy feels drained just mm. thinking about it feels like it's a lot of work and, and work that's not fun and creative and on purpose for me so it's it's like a yeah my physiology feels um a little uh drained mm. Mm. and behavior behavior would be procrastination more than anything because it's not it's not the type of work i like to do mm. Mm. so i'm avoiding it yes yes yeah i procrastinate once in a while just once in a while. Right? Just once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, thanks for sharing. So let's use that as an example. And uh, this is a slide you've seen earlier. And this is where we talk about the five steps. And the five steps somewhat correspond to the ripple. So you have unintentional behaviors. You can move to taking deliberate action. You have physiology that represents more a state that is best when you're running away from a tiger or you're in the sympathetic nervous response. You want to move it to a parasympathetic nervous response. So we'll talk about things to do to be able to change your physiology. And you're going to help me with my uh, unclean house? Totally. Okay. Totally. Great. <laughs> Uh, and I'm patiently waiting for this, this balance, Sanji. <laughs> yes, you have a sense of urgency about it. We will absolutely <laughs> get right. to that. Now, I wish I could clean the house, but I'll get you to an empowered state where cleaning the house will be easier. How okay. about that? Perfect. Okay. So, uh, very quickly then, uh, third is you're frustrated, and we'll teach you how to summon more helpful emotions. What would be a more helpful emotion? Mm. Uh, well, uh, gratitude, any emotion on the positive spectrum would be better than feeling frustrated. Yeah, so. and I think you'll feel that after some of the exercises we have planned for today. Great. And then uh, fourth is really what we call as loving what is, but it's dropping desires, or not really dropping desires, but dropping the intense attachment to a desire. Once you let go the intense attachment, then you released and you have the energy and you have the ability or you're more empowered to do what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. So the house will just get clean because you've dropped the desire to clean the house. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering what my girlfriend will think of that, but uh, I get the point. It's when you can detach from the desire, it certainly helps you feel empowered rather be, than be overwhelmed. Right. Now, the four techniques that we've discussed will get you again in a state of empowerment but many times it doesn't remain because there could be this unhelpful belief and the unhelpful belief could be for example how happy you're going to be when your house is happy sorry <laughs> that too <laughs> but when your house is untidy typically we might find something else to be unhappy about right so reframing beliefs is to get 
to the bottom of what drives your desires. Mm -hmm. And when you reframe them, you get more permanent changes. And so we have a lot of material to go through, and we'll continue to power through this. Uh, let's uh, continue to dive in. Let's do it. And I hope to keep your attention. And I think there's a lot of material here, but it would require a lot of focused attention. Uh, so let's go then to the next step. And a little bit of, we are talking about state shifting, right? You're in a state, uh, you're disempowered, you've been punched in the face, or you're in a ditch. And you want to transition out of it. And typical tendency is to fight the state you're in. So I go back to this quote from uh, Ramana Maharishi, who said that you cannot really fight darkness. What you need is to find the light or to light the candle because you'll scramble, fight the darkness, and that's not going to do you much good, right? It's lighting the candle. So you're in state one, you want to go to state two. The first thing you do is embrace that state. Don't be scared of the darkness, right? Mm -hmm. Then find a transition. If you scramble to find the light, then you'll go to a more automated response. And we'll talk about embracing the state, finding a transition, and then summoning the new state. As we do that, I would like to review what happens in nature, right? In nature, assume there's a zebra and it's attacked by a tiger. The zebra is running and it has all the right intuition, it has all the right body physiology. It gets into a sympathetic nervous response, its blood is in the right place, its heart is pumping and it's running. It's the right response. Then either it's eaten by the tiger or it escapes. When it escapes, what does a zebra do? It shakes itself off, right? And then you see the zebra very peacefully eating grass again, as if nothing happened, right? So there's a struggle, there's a climactic transition, uh, which is the shake, and then you go to your future state. So we will try to copy this. So when we are already in the sympathetic nervous response, we can't automatically move to being joyous and happy. We need a transition state, and we need to summon the new state, like we need to light the candle. And we'll do a few exercises to be able to do that.